Hey everyone, so just continuing through all of these, um, this next one is about the alpha, JIT alpha blend object, and it does some similar stuff to what we just looked at with JIT chroma key and JIT luma key, but rather than using a, um, what you might call, uh, a color value or a brightness value to key out certain, uh, certain parts of an image, we can actually create an image on our alpha plane to determine what is keyed out, uh, which I'm realizing as I say that out loud doesn't make a lot of sense maybe, but um, have you ever seen like a star wipe or like a, you know, anyway, I'll just start showing you. Um, so I'm gonna do the same setup. We always do jit grab, have to open the camera. Uh, Q Metro 33. Get the toggle on there. Uh, JIT P window. And there we go. Move this around here a little. Now, um, when we're looking at the JIT matrix stuff, uh, you know, we always set it up like four channels, char, 640 by 480. And we tried that thing where we said JIT unpack. And we get our red channel here, our green channel here, and our blue channel here. And every time we've ever addressed this, I've always just been like, ignore this channel. The alpha channel doesn't matter. Don't worry about it. We're not getting any information from it. This, today, today is the day where we finally do something with the alpha channel. And what we can use the alpha channel for is to, like I said, key out certain parts of an image. Um, and we're actually gonna import our own alpha channels uh, rather than use anything that's coming through with all this. Cause you'll see like, if I take this and also set up here, it's like we saw before, JIT, uh, sorry, yeah. Chip P window, and there's our red channel, there's our green channel, there's our blue channel, but our alpha channel is just pure white noise, or not even noise, it's just all white pixels. Um, each one of these is a pixel and it's at 255. So we wanna bring our own alpha image in. Uh, but before I get to that, I wanna look, uh, just I'll bring that object up. And JIT alpha blend. And it works a little bit like the JIT chroma key object. We have our first inlet, we'll go into here, and whatever the alpha plane is of this image, we'll see what's keyed out over whatever received in this second inlet, kind of like the JIT noise object. but nothing's happening at the moment. And that is because we're gonna have to intercept it right here. So I'm gonna get rid of this for a second. And I'm gonna be upfront and say that the JIT alpha blend object is a little obtuse in how it works. Um, if you can grasp it, it becomes a really great tool. If not, uh, we'll figure something out. We'll find other ways to explain it. But I'm gonna use the JIT op object. Uh, which you saw in the first tutorial. And you remember I can say at op and give it a mathematical operator like plus. Um, but in this case, I wanna look at something called pass. And pass means just pass it along without, do, without doing anything to it. So nothing changes. I could even put this jit noise in the second inlet. I'll move this away for a second. And we're not seeing any of that. Now, the inverse of that is if I put an exclamation point in front of it. And now what it's saying is don't pass what's coming into the first inlet. Actually block it and only return the information that's coming into the second inlet. Um, and that may not seem like a very useful thing to do, but 
One thing we can do with the JIT op is this is just applying this pass function to all four channels at once. I can actually give it four different operators and each one of these four operators will be enacted just on that plane. So I could say don't pass the red plane from this image, pass it from this inlet. So in this case we're keeping the alpha channel, we're keeping the green channel, we're keeping the blue channel of this first inlet, but this inverse on the red channel means get the red channel from this value, or from this inlet. And we can see that right here. I still have the green and the blue of my image, but there's this red that comes in that looks a lot like our JIT noise thing. And I can do the same thing to the alpha channel. And we don't see anything because um, that's just really not how the alpha channel is set up. We still get our red, green, and blue right here. But whatever we put here is what's going to be blended in alongside here. And we need it to be a grayscale image, a black and white image. So I'm going to make a JIT movie read. I'll hook up my Q Metro there. And I have a movie that I made just for this. If you have, if you have any skill in uh, Adobe After Effects or anything, you can make something cooler than this. I just made a rotating plane. Um, it's half white, half black, and it just loops. It's not even perfect. But essentially, what's going on down there? Yes, I know I'm using Mac, so you don't have to tell me that. I can read that. And actually now, this is a good point to look at if I do the JIT unpack. We should see our movie plane in that first, or am I wrong on that? Let's see, does this just work? So I might have to debug this really quick. I have a feeling maybe it's because this, I have an idea. Let's do that JIT FPS GUI object. I'll just type that out. I bet it's four planes. Yes, that's exact. I'm guessing that's what our problem was. Um, so I'm only passing one plane to it, but even though we have this black and white Im uh, image, it's still reading it as four planes. So I'll do JIT RGB to Luma, and that's just going to change our four plane matrix into a one plane black and white matrix. Exactly what we need. And you can see it actually doesn't change the image at all. That's still that, but even in one plane, it's still the same there. We just need to make sure it's only one plane of information. And I bet if I, unpa I unpack it now, that first alpha plane. Yep, there we go. So all we're doing is replacing that one alpha plane that we usually get that's just all white values with something that's black and white values and we still have our RGB packed into it. And this is what the JIT alpha blend object is saying. Uh, I'm going to use that first inlet, that, or sorry, that first plane of whatever comes into the first inlet is how I key between the second inlet and the RGB information of this first inlet. And you can see, wherever there's white information, it's showing what's in the second inlet. And wherever there's black information, it's showing what's a part of that original one right there. And a trick is just using this JIT op object to pack in uh, a new plane for a new video for the alpha. And it doesn't have to be a movie. Really, anything that we change to JIT RGB to Luma will work. I could apply that to. Let's see. So 
Now I am blending the alpha, I'm turning the alpha plane into an Arg, uh, a Luma key value, or grayscale image of my camera. And you'll see that it works, it's working, it just doesn't, it seems a little weird. What's actually happening is if I don't give it fully black or fully, whoa. If I don't give it fully black or fully white pixels, then it just, like if I did 0.5 as a gray pixel, it'll show half of that inlet, half of this inlet and half of that inlet. Um, so let's, uh, let's use another JIT op. I kind of showed you this one. Uh, I'm going to use the greater than operator. I have to say at op. Uh, and I'll feed my camera through that. So we have our camera. We're turning it into a one plane grayscale. And now I'm going to check every pixel of that incoming plane. And I can compare it against this pixel value. This is an integer. And what it's going to say is every pixel that it encounters, if it's greater than, if the value is greater than this value, return a white pixel to say, yes, that is true. If any pixel coming out of here is less than this value, return a black pixel saying, no, that's not true. So if I did 127, and now we get this kind of binary image. And what's nice about that is it's probably going to work a lot better, or not a lot better, it's just like more of a style that we would want to work with the JIT Alpha Blend object over here. And now I can make a key based on being greater than or less than certain values on a grayscale from my camera image. And it, this is essentially what's happening with our JIT Luma key object, if you remember. We're just taking a luminance value and keying everything out based on how bright something is. But we're just calculating that on our own here. Um, but in terms of like blending two images together or doing JIT Luma key or JIT Chroma key, what's nice about this setup, as confusing as it may look, is we can feed anything into here to be our mask that masked uh, mask out an image. So we can create our own videos, we can generate our own stuff with Max MSP and Jitter in order to be our keyed out value. And that's just something that can be kind of fun to play with. If you wanted to take that into um, After Effects and you could have like a little white star that grows really big and you've essentially created your own star white feature from one transitioning from one scene to the next um, and you can get really creative with that. So I encourage you all to explore that. It could be pretty fun.